So, Roger, as we all know, is just completely smitten by Miss Florence. The Ice Queen that melts his heart and causes his ball sack to churn. And, you know, I really am self-conscious about my attire and my appearance. I mean, it just really doesn't seem on par with the exalted prose of this work of literature. But I'm gonna muscle through it. <clears throat> so, we're finally getting to a part where he encounters Miss Florence in a most shameful way. So... Let's explore that together. In the fervid heat of that summer, I dreamed day and night of Miss Florence, and I saw her everywhere I went. I became obsessed with the things that she had touched or used and her purposes in doing so and with what part of her sweet, sacred body. He's never one for hyperbole. He's, he's just in love. He really is. He's 18, she's 23. Um, the ripe bosom, pairs of her haunches. I mean, who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be sold on that? Everything at Virginia Lodge seemed imbued with her aura, and as for her clothing, it was the stuff of fantasy. Grub had her lair in a ramshackle collection of outhouses some distance from the lodge, and I would make my way, my way there and peek at the pennants of Miss Florence's gorgeous underthings fluttering to dry in the breeze. Silks of black, white, navy, or even scarlet, which tempted me to purloin them and carry them off to my own lair for my improper act of worship. My attack on the weights grew more and more strenuous. I worked up fearful sweats and took to exercising completely naked, imagining myself some great god in combat with the cold metal. After I was thoroughly lathered, I would don my sports clothing and scurry to the lake to strip anew and perform my act of obeisance to the welcoming waters. <clears throat> I wonder how many times he has done this to this point in the book. I mean, I don't know if the pond, I mean, if it's taking place in the time I think it's taking, you know, it says it's taking place, there's no filter on that pond. I mean, fish are probably getting pregnant from all of the jizz he has dumped into this lake. And I'm going to leave you with that thought as I continue. <clears throat> Once or twice in my fevered imagination, I thought I heard footfalls or even glimpsed a flicker of a watching eye, but put it down to the heat and exhaustion. Major Dark and Miss Florence were, after all, about their business, and Dido's flower beds were far distant from the secluded lake. One day my schedule was running rather late. I had become engrossed in a book. I hope it's as engrossing as this. <clears throat> I was engrossed in a book, and when I got to my exercises, the sun was already waning. It was nearly it was nearly tea time before I was prepared to visit my lake, and I had just embarked on a final session of the punishing weight drill when the door of the shed opened and a shaft of light fell across my sweating muscles. Panting, I had not heard the intruder approach and dropped my weights with a fearful clang when I heard the cool fury of a lady's voice. So this is what dirty little boys get up to. I turned round and saw that it was Miss Florence. Her breast was heaving, both from the exertion of her cycling and her rage at finding me in my immodest state. And her face was a livid red. Hastily, I reached for my shorts and shirt to cover myself, reflecting that since I had been facing the window, she would have seen no more than my bare buttocks. 
However, in reaching for my clothes, I was obliged to turn so that there was no concealing my naked organs slapping against my thighs. He's called Donkey for a reason. God help us. I began to babble my lame excuses, though I, not she, were the intruder. But her lip curled in angry scorn, which thrilled me more than she could have imagined. <clears throat> she stood with her arms akimbo, contemptuously surveying me. You worm, she hissed, touching my things. A smutty, smutty worm, she murmured, her eyes wide and more serene as she enjoyed my abject embarrassment. How utterly pathetic you are. I suppose you do this all the time, playing with yourself, I imagine, like a filthy little schoolboy. No, Miss Florence, I managed to gasp. I was, uh, I was only exercising. I didn't think anyone would come. You know what happens to worms, she said casually, and then ground her heel round and round in the sawdust. These weights belong to Greville, she mused with a faraway look. I should have polished them myself. Well, since you have done so, I believe I suppose you may use them. Just make sure you bathe properly before dinner. You stink as all schoolboys do. With that, she parked her bicycle against the wall and in a flounce of skirts was gone. <clears throat> Panting and ecstatic, she had noticed my existence. Senpai noticed me. I looked at the bicycle that had Ruth so recently borne her precious body. My organ rose rapidly to aching stiffness. <clears throat> I reached out timorously to touch the handlebars she had held, the pedals her dainty feet had trodden, the sweat, the seat still warm from her pumping thighs. My member was so stiff I thought I should burst. Gingerly, I pressed the tip against one of the pedals, but the cold metal did nothing to dampen my ardor. Then, trembling, I pressed my lips to the bicycle seat and began to kiss and lick the leather, still damp and fragrant from her panties and crotch. I drew the bicycle towards me and then pressed the saddle to my ball sack, moaning in my fevered excitement. Suddenly, I was bathed in a shaft of light. The door opened wide, and Miss Florence stood once more before me. This time, there could be no excuses. And that cliffhanger, we will continue in the next video. It's about to get wild. Not really, it's a lot of talking, but, you know, it's enjoyable, so... I'm going to cover it.